This all took place junior year of high school, which was about nine years ago now. I attended a private Catholic school in Northern California. Not very large. Each class had maybe 50 or 60 people. Some of the classes were taught off campus at a nearby community college, and you could get college credit for them if you took the test at the end of the semester. Well, since about the 8th grade, there was this girl in the class named Nastia. She had a heavy Russian accent, and was very smart, beautiful, and opinionated. She always called people out when they were being dicks, and was the first to volunteer for any sport or extracurricular activity. She was very popular, but in a school that small, social cliques weren't really a big deal. All of us had pretty much gone to school together for most of our lives. I have some Russian heritage as well, and always enjoyed hearing about her family. She didn't talk much, though, about when they were in Russia. Well, one day she didn't come to school, and the next she wasn't there either. The teachers refused to talk about it. On the fourth day of her absence, a rumor starts going around that she got deported. People joke at first, but then someone takes it the wrong way, and it's widespread gossip. Except the next day, Nastia does show up, and she's different. She doesn't talk to anyone and is super quiet. I remember that day clearly because her makeup wasn't done, and her hair was in a tight braid when she normally wore it in many more elaborate ways. She said she had a family emergency, and that was it. It was about two weeks later that five of us were off campus at the college, when Nastia received a call from the school that her mother was there to pick her up. Everyone felt uneasy at this, and she sat up at the sidewalk with a couple of the girls. I remembered her looking very pale and squeezing another girl's hand until her mother pulled up and got her. Nastia didn't come back to school. This was all very dramatic at the time, and everyone talked about it constantly. Her MySpace had been shut down a little before that day she left, actually, and none of her closest friends knew what was going on. The whole thing was super creepy. It wasn't until I was in college in a different state that I got back in touch with an old crush. While catching up, her name came up. He used to be good friends with her, and told us what had happened the details of it coming out to her close friends years later. Apparently, Nastia and her mother fled Russia when she was only six years old to get away from her father, who was involved in organized crime. Her mother married an American man who worked in IT, and was able to bring the grandparents over to live with them as well when he started his own company and it became somewhat successful. They kept their slightly less expensive apartment in the city, and moved to a nicer house in the suburbs outside keeping the apartment for the grandparents and in the stepfather's name. Well, the real father held a grudge because he believed the daughter was stolen from him, and apparently he spent years networking and trying to find them until he found all the details of where they were. Unfortunately, the information was older by the time he'd received it, and he believed the mother and daughter lived in the city apartment. What had happened was the father sent someone over, and they planned to poison the stepfather, mother, and daughter by covering the door and door handle in mustard gas. The grandfather was the one who received the injuries from this, and was hospitalized during those few days she was out of school. He had gone blind, and suffered some serious injuries, especially due to his age. But miraculously, he survived. I didn't get the details of how the family knew that's what had happened, but Nastia was pulled from school, and they had moved shortly after. I heard the stepdad stayed behind and sold his business, and then joined the rest of the family in whatever state they moved to. I know where, but even though names are changed, I don't want to risk being at fault for another attack. I ended up being able to find her on Facebook a couple of years ago through mutual friends, even though she had changed her name. She's doing okay. But to her father, let's never meet. I live in the smaller side of a city in Estonia. I won't tell in which part because of obvious reasons, and there aren't many people living in the side of the city that I live in, so it's pretty quiet here, 
and nothing strange usually happens. I'm a 13-year-old boy who loves to listen to creepy true stories. Now on to mine. It's 2 p.m. and I just finished another boring school day. So I have guitar lessons on Wednesdays after school, and the lessons last from one hour to two and a half hours. I started walking from school to a shop nearby. I bought a can of soda, left the shop, and headed to the guitar lesson. On the way there, I was a bit late for the bus, so I booked it, and ran to get there on time. I made it, and I was currently really happy that my running skills actually had come in handy for once. But the happiness didn't last for long. I had forgotten my notes for the song that I was supposed to play in front of the whole class. Fuck, I said in my head, and I was so pissed off for forgetting such an important thing. I tried remembering all the chords, but I couldn't remember anything. I was even thinking about skipping the lesson and going back home to lie to my parents that the teacher was sick and that there was no lesson happening today, but I decided to man up and went to the lesson anyway. That was my first bad idea. It started raining as soon as I got off the bus, so I put my hood on all the way. I got to the entrance of my guitar school and spotted a weird six-foot-tall homeless-looking guy wearing a red hooded jacket, just sitting in a puddle. I thought it was weird at first, and then I saw that he wasn't even moving. He was just sitting in the middle of the street, and it felt like he might have been paralyzed or even dead. I watched him for about five minutes, and he didn't move once. I got a very unnerving feeling and stepped into the classroom. I quickly forgot about the man and started playing my guitar. After two and a half hours of sitting in that warm and sweaty classroom, we were finally free and I went outside. And to my surprise, the man was still sitting there and he hadn't moved a fucking muscle. I was creeped out again and I took a photo to send to my friends. The bad thing was that I had to get some stuff at a gardening shop for my mom and the guy was sitting directly in front of the store. He's going to grab me and do something with me. That was my first thought, but I was paranoid because I had just listened to Corpse Husband's video of five creepy Let's Not Meet stories and thought I was going to be one of the victims. When I finally had the courage to go past him and into the store, nothing happened at first. I was so relieved that he didn't just try to grab my leg or something and drag me away. But then again, why would anyone do that, especially in front of a store that was packed with people and in bright daylight? I bought some garden stuff for my mom and got out of there, because I was tired and wanted to get home and take a big nap. But as soon as I passed the guy, he got up and started walking behind me. I was so freaked out that I didn't want to glance back to see what he looked like. I just had the thought of, no worries, he just got tired at the exact same time I passed him, and now he's walking in the same direction as me. What a coincidence. I got to the bus stop and you guessed it. Mr. Sitting in a Puddle Guy was standing right next to me and staring at me. Yeah, you heard it right. He was staring directly into my eyes, and I could see it from the corner of my left eye. I didn't want to look at him, so I kept staring forward. In a couple of minutes, my bus came. I entered first, and the Puddle Man came in right after. I have to mention this. He smelled like he had been living in a garbage can for the last month. And to be honest, I think he actually had been. I walked all the way to the end of the bus where there weren't many people, and thus there were many free seats. Of course, the guy sits right next to me. I didn't want to switch seats to seem rude, so I bared his disgusting odor. I was getting a bit unnerved, though, because he wouldn't stop staring at me, and he was breathing through his mouth down my neck. I could feel and smell the stench of rotting egg coming from his mouth. Fucking disgusting. When I got to my stop, it was already dark out, so it made me more scared than I already was. I sat at the window seat and stood up to let him know that I wanted to get off, but he just wasn't getting the hint. I said, Excuse me, but I'd like to leave. Could you please get up or at least move your legs so I can get off the bus? He didn't even flinch. I thought that maybe he didn't understand Estonian. So I said it again, but now in Russian. No answer, and he didn't move his legs or his body. He just kept staring at me, 
and it was now that I saw his face. He had brown eyes and a long, dirty beard. It was covered with cheese or something like that. He had a baseball cap that had many holes in it, and a sweaty and muddy Lakers t-shirt. I basically jumped over him so that I could try to get out. Bear in mind I had a long and heavy guitar on my back, so it was kind of difficult to navigate. When I got off the bus, this man got off as well. This fucking guy didn't move when he clearly knew I wanted to get off the bus, but now that I was leaving, he just started following me again. Luckily, my apartment was very close to the bus stop, so I literally ran for my life to the door. And when I looked back towards him, he was running at me like a maniac. Luckily, we have a door that automatically closes when shut. So I get the door open and closed at the right time, because the second it closed, he was at the door banging on it and screaming some incoherent things at me. I ran straight upstairs to my apartment door, which was on the fourth floor. I was basically bawling my eyes out right there and then. My mom had been at home preparing dinner for my family, and I told her everything. She ran to the window that overlooked the house door, but saw nobody, obviously. The scary part is, though, that when my dad came home, he said he saw a guy in a red hooded jacket with a baseball cap, standing on the third floor, and knocking on different doors asking for me by name. My dad asked him what the fuck he was doing, and he ran down the stairs and out of the door. Thank God my dad came home when he did, because if the man had gone one story higher, he would have knocked on our door. My question is this, how the fuck did this man get inside? And how the fuck did he even know my name? He must have been stalking me somehow, or asked my friends, neighbors, or family members for name. You may remember me from the bloodthirsty mob surrounded our ambulance thread. I thought I'd share my other let's not meet experience, as it's a doozy, and the reason I wanted to become a paramedic in the first place. The night I'm going to talk about was nearly the last night of my life, and I gained a strong belief in fate after it. I have proof of this tale, and it's at the end of this post. Please read first, as it'll set the context and be more worthwhile. It's early August 2004. I'm 17 years old and working a late shift at McDonald's one of my first part-time jobs. It's a Saturday, and my best friend, with whom I just started to go out drinking, is disappointed because I'm at work. The shift is unusually quiet. At 7 p.m., the manager declares that one of the newbies, myself or another guy, can go home. It comes down to a coin toss, which I win. I know this all sounds dumb, but that coin toss nearly cost me my life. I immediately hop on a bus home, shower, change, and set off to meet my friend. We got a little too drunk. I was so irresponsible at 17. We'd mix shots of whiskey, vodka, and anything else you could think of all into a glass, then down it. Whilst fucking about on the dance floor, I knocked a guy's drink out of his hand. He started to blow up, and I promptly walked away. His friends kicked me in the back as I did so. I later learned he'd been kicked out after throwing a bottle at my head, which missed me, so I had no idea it even happened at the time. We left the club, which led out into a little passage beside the college it was attached to. And this passage fed onto the busiest road running through our town, but it was 2am and dead quiet. By this point, my buddy had bumped into some old friends from our high school and didn't notice me break away from the group. There was a petrol station directly opposite, where we would always get sandwiches for the munchies. At this point, my memory is a blur of what could be memories, or bits of eyewitness accounts that I've constructed into false memories. I'll tell it as if I were seeing it now for the purpose of clarity. I was drunk off my face. I walked towards the garage, and a car came from the car park joining the passage. It was long, the path, so it easily cleared the car park and got out onto the road before I got there. As I stepped out into the road, this car had unknown to me, accelerated to 30 miles per hour and struck my right leg as I placed it forward on the ground. This is incredibly important to the story, and my survival. First about the car. Oh god, 
how I was lucky that I was dealing with the chump from the club. He had a typical look at me modified car with a low bumper. It was nearly touching the pavement, which resulted in my foot being scooped up. A regular bumper would have likely buckled and shattered my ankle at this angle, so I'm told. It hits my right leg. I'm in the middle of a stride and this saves my life. The car instantly snaps both bones in my lower leg, but crucially, it spins me like a coin on its head, around the side not over the bonnet and roof. I break two of my ribs in my right side as I hit the bonnet, and puncture a lung too. My right forearm impacts the passenger side window as I'm flipped around the car, and the glass destroys my arm. I later see in the hospital that it was akin to taking an ice cream scoop down to the bone. I bounced off the car and onto the road at this point. My landing couldn't have been any more unlucky. I land on the shattered fragments of window and essentially roll across a lake of glass, shredding my arms. I don't honestly know if I remember this. Writing this story, I get fragments of super realistic memories, but it's like my mind is saying hell no and recalling them before I can properly picture them. It makes me feel sick, but I guess that's regression for you. My best friend at the time called my parents in an ambulance. I spent 14 days in the hospital. My leg now contains a titanium bar and some real fun at airports, but apart from some late day tingling, I walk and run normally. I had a fantastic surgeon fix my arm without the need for skin grafts too. You might be wondering, why is this on the sub? The driver of the car was Mr. Bottle Thrower. The whole bunch of people outside the club later gave statements that he had accelerated and swerved intentionally into my path. His girlfriend was riding up front and was covered in my blood. What a lovely bloke. He went to jail, but I don't know how long for. I moved to the south of England several years later. What is up guys, Blue Spooky here, as always. I just wanted to thank you guys so much for watching, especially if you made it this far to the end of the video. If you guys enjoyed the video, please feel free to leave feedback in the comments below, or perhaps like, share, or subscribe if you feel so inclined. As in the update before anything else, I'm going to start working on the next Q&A for this month pretty soon. So if you guys have any questions for me, please feel free to leave them in the comments below on this video right here. If you guys have any themes you'd like me to read, or any personal stories that you'd like to share, go ahead and take a look in the description of the video below. There will be links to all of my social media accounts, including my Facebook, Twitter, and Gmail. Go ahead and send me a message on any of those, and I'll try to respond to your message and include your story in a video as soon as possible. If you do decide to send in a story, please feel free to include in the tagline what the name of the story is, what the theme is if it has any, and how you'd like to be credited in the description of the video the story appears in. If any of you are curious about the music used in this video, the music is always listed in the description below, in the order which it appears in the video, I list the tracks by name, and I also have links to the artists in case you like their work and you'd like to check out more of it, so if you're curious about the music, go ahead and check in the description below. Last but not least, of course, if you guys have any constructive criticism, please feel free to leave it in the comments below, as I'm always looking for new ways to improve the channel. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope you guys have a great day.